In this video, we're going to look at decision trees and visualizing the trees, the, the splits, using the Graphis package. Um, this came from, uh, I was working with a customer recently, and they, were, uh, they wanted to understand their data, basically run uh, simple heuristics on the data, basically simple models, intuitive models, to understand at a high level what their customers were doing. And we found this solution to be very uh, appealing because it's, it's not only there's a visual aspect to it where you clearly see your trees, but you can also dig a little deeper and that's where we're going to go to. Uh, first, we're going to look at you know running one or two of these simple charts, and then we're going to look at you running off of samples of your data. The problem, if you just use all your data and you create these splits, is you're basically going to overfit. So you don't know if you can trust these splits that much. But if you run it on many samples of your data, you're going to be able to trust those splits a little bit more. So let's get to it. Uh, we're going to use the sklearn package for both the decision tree uh, model and the data sets. It has the iris data set uh, in, um, in the data sets uh, import and you simply call iris and data set dot load iris and it will you know it will give you the data set so that's very easy to do and it's it's kind of pieced out in different pieces. There's one piece is called uh, iris dot feature name. The other one is iris dot target names, uh, and uh, iris dot target. So we're gonna kind of pull them out and create a data frame. So first I pull, I create a data frame and I uh, with its features, and then I'm creating the species outcome variable. And I want you to take a look here. We're doing something a little bit different that's normally done. We're actually going to create a categorical column. This is something that's very familiar to our users, uh, a little bit less to Python users. We are basically uh, uh, saying this, this is a, a, a numerical data, but we're going to be using categories instead. And it's going to make it a lot easier to read. Uh, you see you have, it's actually going to use the words instead of numbers, but you'll be able to model it uh, without uh, without any problems. And you can even, it'll even confirm it's a category, an S3 category, Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. So basically, there are a few features that explain three different types of flowers, and we're going to use it to, um, uh, to, to, to see how we can split the data with the decision tree model. And we can also, another cool feature we'll use was, is the counter to see how our uh, data set is balanced. You always want to make sure you're working with a balanced data set. And we see that it's just perfectly balanced. We have 50 samples per flower. So let's start with a simple split of, of depth one. That means there's only going to be one feature. It's going to split the data off of one feature. So you call the tree dot decision tree classifier, say only one feature, and you fit it on your features comma target variable. And then we're going to visualize it. So here you will need the graphics package if you don't have it, install it. And you're going to get this. Is, this renders it through a PDF, but you can also do it through through images. You know, um, the links for the help file are there, depending on your needs. Uh, here we see that the most important. So we fit it all the entire data set, right? The most important split for you know a tree depth of one is petal width uh, of uh, at 0.8. So if it's smaller than 0.8 we see that we capture out of a sample size of 50, we capture all the uh, setosas, right? They're our first uh, outcome variable. And larger than 0 0.8, we have a sample, we capture 100, and we see that we capture both the other two, right? So we already know that right there, a simple model is any petal width smaller than 0.8 centimeters is automatically setosa, bigger is automatically one of the other two types. Okay, so, And it's always a good idea to double check that. So before I forget, here we see that um, Setosa is it indeed the smallest one, 0.244 centimeters, right? So I did a group by uh, on petal width. And we see Virginica and uh, Versicolor are larger. So we do confirm the chart is correct. It's always a good idea. What if you, um, so you see the chart is showing us Setosa. What if we wanted to know Virginica? We wanted to force it to just give us the split on a, a, a particular um, outcome variable. So that's easy to do. I'm taking, I'm gonna make a copy of the data set and I'm going to uh, recreate my outcome variable. And instead of gonna say, if it's Virginica, keep it as Virginica. If it's any of the others, make it other. And then you end up with, right, a data set that has 100 others and 50 Virginica. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rerun that through, through the same model as we did before. There's a, there's a little caveat here. I want to make sure I, I make that clear. We're going to call the class weight balanced. 
because it's a good idea to have a balanced class. We don't want to have imbalance. And so it's what's going to do is going to, it's going to augment the minority outcome and decrease the majority outcome. And here is a tree. The tree is a little bit, because it's balanced, it's a little bit more complicated to read. It did keep the sample size the same, but it created more, uh, uh, less other and more uh, Virginia guy in our case. And you see that uh, now the, the cutoff is pedal end centimeter, small than point, uh, 4.75. We have 95 cases that fulfill that. And this is a fraction now, right? You see there's a decimal point. So 70.5% of those were um, with Virginia uh, were others and 1.5 Virginica and those larger than 4.75 we have 4.5 were other and 73.5 percent were Virginica so same type of concept but you got to read it slightly differently and as always double check the numbers so we'll look at the original data set we'll see the petal length centimeter and indeed we see Virginica is the biggest right and we'll also look at the uh, temporary data frame we created. And we're going to say, give us anything that's smaller than 4.75. And we see that Virginica only one. Right? Keep in mind the numbers are different because uh, the data set, uh, uh, the decision tree, right, augmented augmented the, 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 the features. And we're not seeing it that. That's all done directly in the model. We don't have to deal with it. We're still seeing the original number of features. OK. Um, so uh, oh, and one thing we could do, I mean, just for to make sure that this is clear, let's let's do it without balancing the class. Okay, so instead of I'm just going to leave the default, which is not balanced, and let's see, and you're going to see it's a bit different. And instead we have 150 uh, samples, but 100 are other and 50 are Virginica, and the split now is petal width at 1.75, which is interesting. It's different, and 104 samples, and out of those, these are not fractions anymore. These are numbers. 99 are other, and five was Virginica, and larger than 1.75, one was other, and 45 were Virginica. So still, Virginica is very large petal width, and um, uh, the thing to keep in mind is I forgot to mention here is when you pass your class name to the to the graphics pa package, you need to pass it in its alphabetical order. The the it's very you know the easiest thing to do is just look at the, what the counter outputs, and the outputs always uh, I think it's alphabetic. So other first, Virginica uh, last. You want to put it in the same order because otherwise it's gonna it's gonna be confusing. Always check the numbers so you understand your output. So this is where I wanted to get to. I think it's the most important part. Um, uh, it's to see the splits on many samples because you're not going to be overfitting on your data. I mean, you're still overfitting, right? Because you, you, this, this is your historical data, but hopefully be more applicable to future data. So let me just copy and paste this. The difference here is that now we're not interested in the outcome, what goes to where anymore. We just want to see the splits. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm actually going to ask for a slightly uh, a deeper trees, so two features per, per uh, a tree. And I'm going to loop through the data 20 times and instead of taking the, the entire 150 data set, I'm only going to take 10 rows and sample that. So we, we declare our decision tree outside the loop, but inside we're fitting every chime because we're fitting it on different data. And this is the output, right? So no more, unfortunately, no more graphics, uh, you know, no more pretty charts. But instead, it's what's interesting here is you clearly see that pedal width is pedal width and sepal width, right? So we're now seeing two important primary splits and that's what I wanted to get to it's not always you know that one that the chart gave you on your whole data no there are other things going on in your data and you'll only see that if you sample it so we see petal width is important but sepal width is important as well uh, you know I would definitely you know if something appears only twice I would probably ignore it but if it appears many times I would say okay those are important and we ask for two so now we're starting to have different uh, uh, pairs. And also, the values are not always the same. Look at pedal width at 1.5, 1.45, uh, pedal width at 0.8. So this is kind of the, the information I was sharing with my, with my customer is, you know, instead of doing things manually, visually, you could use this as a starting point. I wouldn't trust this stuff, you know, point blank. I would take these numbers and I would investigate manually on your data to see why why is this important, right? So you think about this as a data set about customer behavior instead of this, you know, uh, the iris flower data set. And you say, why is why is this split important? Why is a particular split important? And it may, you know, you may learn a lot about your customer by by investigating. Let's look at those that are above and below. What's different about them? And um, you know, you do that for all of that. You know, maybe even you know, if you have a lot of data, you could do um, deeper deeper splits. And you may, uh, you know, you may understand your customer a lot better.